I believe I'm going to retire for the evening. But you come to bed when you're ready. And don't wander too far. No farther than that cabin. Alright? You never know when enemies might be watching. Okay, here begins my observations about the strange cave we found. Aramis broke some crystals, and now he wants me to jot down notes, because he is an idiot that doesn't understand the scientific method. Whatever. Hopefully, they'll provide useful. I found there are seven colors and two neutrals in this strange cavern that coalesce around a bottomless obsidian pool. Each seems to have some meaning, some strength, and simultaneously a drawback, but the power, oh, the power, the first I found was red, of course, my favorite color, when I was made to grasp it as a little boy, a great sense of determination and power thrummed through my form, as though a god had chosen me. I sped out after Seraph and grabbed him by the neck after he'd hit me. He was scared. I dropped him and the crystal when I realized I was shaking with aggression. Red, avoid. Purple is rather intriguing. I tried it a few weeks after my last endeavor. Once the, ahem, nightmares let up. I was filled with most noble intentions and a clear mind though it seems the double-edged sword is arrogance. But is it really arrogance, if I truly am the best? Green this time. I appear to have twisted into some kind of nature-heavy creature, which is odd for a dragon. The trees and flowers listen, even the bee, but it appears much like nature itself. The drawback is being temperamental and prone to causing disaster. Let's keep green as a maybe. I fucked up. I tried blue. It made me far more intelligent, but my emotional capacity became as cold as an insect. I watched a man be beheaded for a crime earlier, and where I might feel a twinge of sympathy, I felt nothing. I don't like this one. It makes me see her, the demon. I have to hurry. She knows what I'm doing now. She's warned me once, and I know I won't get another chance. I must hurry. Orange 
avoid at all costs. Do not touch the orange one. Go, the strain of heroes, at the cost of pride. Silver, the strain of strategists and the arcane. Avoid at all costs. I'll never be able to seal that damned demon away. That just leaves white and black. But what do they do? What are they for? I don't understand. The white and black do nothing. And I know the demon is upon me. I don't know what she is. I can't understand her words. Each hits like shrapnel making my body physically recoil. The fear I feel for her reminds me of when Seraph burned my wing and I fell into the sea with a particularly angry leviathan. Those cold eyes in the deep, that massive form rushing me, Hundreds of feet long. Nothing. Nothing compared to the demon from the place of shadows. Paramus. He tried it. I cannot believe he tried to fay trap the demon. She's so angry now. Why did he think she'd help him? Just because she hates me. Why? He's doomed us all. The demon is coming. 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 The demon is Oh no. You. Cyrena, darling. I'm going to find Uncle Raven when he's sleeping and make him experience a thousand years of nightmare. Involving crying infants. To be fair. Stop talking. You're lucky you got away with your knife, you purple hued fuck. I hit you with a fraction of the power of your damned son, and you still think you can crawl in front of me. Talking like we're hot pals, the best of chums. You nearly ended the world, you dirtot. Oh, it was your idea this time. Great. Good. I just love being ripped away from my dimension by such weird-looking fuckers that don't respect my time or station. Sai is the god of finality in her dimension. But here, I think she might stand for something different. And look different as well. 
I have big ears. I can hear you, you lilac looking. Oh, do forgive me. I never meant to be rude to you, Lady Sirena. I promise. And you do have my utmost apologies for messing with your domain beforehand. I do hope that you understand that the slavery and torture have been matters of great concern for me while I was in prison. Are you seriously trying to manipulate me? Me? I would never. Why would the god of finality care about slavery after all? Some things are simply meant to never change. Wouldn't you agree, Songbird? Agreed, agreed. It is terribly tragic that so many people suffer here. But, ah, what would a god from another dimension care? I don't. Of course, of course. After all, that would be a tremendous amount of effort, even for the most powerful of all gods. <laughs> it would not be. I literally nearly killed you with an orbital strike from your own son. Songbird. Shh. Not if you ask nicely. Laying it all bare before a fae is an interesting choice, my love. I'm not a fae. I'm not even from the same dimension as a fucking fae. Nor am I an exhausting, riddle-loving liar who gets off on messing with people. I don't make these deals. Elaine makes these deals on my behalf if I can be bothered. What I do is run around all day trying to clean up this stupid mistborn mess. Which is what I need to be doing now before you fuck it up even harder than you already have. Well, I do sincerely, humbly apologize for adding to your strife. We're not trying to make things harder. Just... We're trying to make them right. Ah. However poorly you think of me and my kind, Sirena, my songbird has done nothing wrong. They see a future in which they are no longer subject to our wrath. That is all. It was my hope that a proper songbird could handle the crystal and use it to take back the power that was taken from them. If there is to be a deal, I will pay for it. The responsibility falls on my head. I'm listening. Hey you. Thanks for listening to the end. I'd like to thank It's Esme Jones on Reddit for continuing this series. And I'd also like to thank Really Bored ASMR for providing her voice for Sirena. If you enjoyed this audio, remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. I love seeing them, and I try to respond to as many as possible. Anyway, see you later.